Fenway Park, Boston, home of the famous Boston Red Sox. This is one of America's most beautiful and comfortable parks, kept spit and span, so baseball can be enjoyed in ideal surroundings. And here in this park since 1907, some of the greatest players in the history of baseball have represented Boston. Yes, sir, let's go to the ball game. It's any day, and it's any game. And there's always action at Fenway. We're outside with the crowd right now on the Jersey Street side of the park, and just about ready to move through the gates inside. Time for that program, though, that scorecard, peanuts now. Baseball and Gansett a bit later. And that symbol right there means baseball at its best. Well, the pitchers are just about warmed up. The last test of that fastball and that curve before game time. And the traditional meeting at home plate before the game for the exchange of lineups and going over the ground rules. Always a thrill when the home team takes the field. Here are the Red Sox pouring out of their dugout. Play ball, that first pitch, and it's strike ball right in there. One of the favorites at Fenway Park for years has been the little professor, Dom DiMaggio. Dom is one of the best leadoff men in the game. He really looks him over up there. Voted as the American League All-Star center fielder in 1951, Dom DiMaggio is one of baseball's best hitters and also best base runners. When you talk about outfielding, well, there's none better, no surer than Dom DiMaggio. He can really go get him. Another popular Red Soxer is Johnny Pesky. Johnny hit 313 for the Red Sox in 1951 and owns a lifetime batting average of better than 300. Watch Johnny beat out this perfect drag bunt. He's always been a real hustler, gives it all he's got, all the time. You all know this next fella, it's Ted Williams, and he's on deck just itching to get up there for that good cut. Casey Stengel and Allie Reynolds are deciding how to pitch to Ted. And here's one of the game's most famous swings copied by youngsters all over America. Power has always been synonymous with the Red Sox, from Pat Dougherty and Buck Freeman down through Jimmy Fox and Joe Cronin, and in recent years to Ted Williams. Fans have loved the home run and they haven't been disappointed at Fenway. And there it goes, it's a Ted Williams wallop. Yes, sir, when it's seat squirming fingernail biting time at Fenway, well, here's just what it takes to complete a familiar scene of perfect enjoyment. Boy, look at this lucky guy. He's got the best seat in the house. And he's also got that cooling, thirst-quenching Narragansett lager beer. As we often tell you, hi, neighbor, have a Gansett. More famous for his hitting, Williams is a master patrolling the left field area at Fenway Park. Ted really knows how to play that wall. And here he is drawing a beat and a fly ball. Another fam uh, favorite Red Soxer, Junior Stevens, who had rough luck in 51 with a leg injury. Junior hopes to have recovered, though, and to be slamming that long ball again for the Red Sox. Not this time, though, as Stevens lifts a high cloud duster. Who's got it? Earl Combs, first base coach of the Red Sox, and Billy Goodman, a handy guy to have around. Billy played five positions in 1951. 
And he's that 300 hitter you like to have in your lineup. Early win of the Cleveland Indians is now pitching to Clyde Vollmer, who won a lot of games for the Red Sox with his big bat. Clyde in 1951 struck so many key blows that we called him Dutch the Clutch. Come on, Clyde, straighten one out. And he does just that. You can get a new ball out, Mr. Umpire. No need to worry about that one anymore. One of the 22 home runs that Clyde Vollmer hit in 1951. Well, who's the next hitter? Hey, wait a minute, who's this character? <laughs> you can use only one bat at a time, fella. Well, let's get back to the big leaders. Look at Dropo, good position to hit there. Walt Dropo landing a base hit in the right field. Sophomore Jinx got walled after a sensational rookie season, but he hopes to be coming up with some more base knocks like this one in the future. There's a typical dropo blow, a line drive off the left field wall. Incidentally, that's Don Lenhart in a Chicago uniform and now wearing the uniform of the Boston Red Sox. Let's watch Dropo in the field now, an unassisted play at first base. Man, he's big enough to go bear hunting with a switch. Freddie Hatfield is better known for his sensational fielding, but right now, Freddie has just gone for the bacon and eggs. Yes, sir, he's a very happy guy. Look at the grin on that guy. Can't win without the pitching, they say, and here's a fellow who won and saved a lot of games for the Red Sox. It's Ellis Kinder, baseball's top relief pitcher, a typical Kinder delivery. Strike three, swinging to retire the side. Another big winner for the Red Sox has been Mel Parnell the last four years. Look at that smooth windup, the whole body thrown into the delivery. Really big league there, Mel. And Bill White shows us some smooth form too in his delivery. It's Ray Scarborough tossing one in. Well, so much for the pitching, and time now for a slight break in action. They always scrape the infield at the end of the fifth inning at Fenway, so the diamond will be in good order the last part of the game. And that's time for another refreshing treat of the famous beer that brings you the Red Sox in both network radio and television, famous Narragansett lager beer, brewed in New England's largest brewery. And there's that lucky man again. Well, let's watch some double plays now. It's always one of baseball's most thrilling maneuvers. Around the horn she goes, from third over to second, and now the relay to first for the twin killing. Johnny Pesky's the middle man on this DP. Watch Dropo stretch. There's Billy Goodman starting a double play. And Goodman relaying to first. There's quite a double play combination. Jerry Coleman and Phil Rizzuto of the Yankees. It's Coleman to Rizzuto, watch Phil get out of the way of the incoming runner.
Now it's an opponent's double play that just misses. Ned Garver of the St. Louis Browns starting this one. There's one out. But no double play. Now watch this next one, it's a rarity. It's a triple play, line drive to third for one out. Throw to second for a double play. And the relay to first, a triple play. The Tigers pull this one off at Fenway Park. The capable men in blue run the game on the field, and they have to come up with their decisions right then and there. But let's go around the bases now with some close plays that the umpires had to call at Fenway Park. Luke Easter of the Indians handling this slow bounder off the bat of Freddie Hatfield. Better make up your mind, Luke. First baseman Walt Dropo to pitcher Mel Parnell this time. Sometimes the decisions are made easy when the human element, the error, crops into the play. I'll bet Don Callaway of the Tigers is mad at himself over that one. Well, let's move down to the Keystone sack now. And here's Johnny Pesky sliding in just ahead of the peg. He's safe. Johnny's on the other side of the play now. Notice the good position for the tag, feet straddling the bag to avoid being spiked. That base runner looks like he's been caught stealing chickens. Dom DiMaggio just lying the base hit to left field. But Dom's going to try and stretch it for two. Here he comes, and he's out, but a nifty slide. Over to third base now, and here comes Freddie Hatfield barreling in as Orestes Bonoso handles the peg. Anything can happen on a close play. Now this runner is going to be safe as the throw from the outfielder hits him. Most plays at home are always spectacular because they mean a run or an out. It's Orestes Bonoso sliding in and he's out. But this one's going to be a run for the Red Sox as Johnny Pesky slides across. Not much argument on this one. Yes, sir, always lots to talk about over our Narragansett baseball microphones. Not only about the Red Sox and famous Narragansett, but also about the outstanding players from the visiting teams. For example, Joe DiMaggio, the famous Yankee Clipper who's been admired at Fenway for years. Take a good look at him. He's one of the truly immortals of the great American pastime. There's that famous DiMaggio Grace. Masio tries to shoestring this one. He's hustled on every play of his many brilliant seasons. They call this man baseball's best third baseman. It's George Kell of the Tigers. And he's throwing to his teammate Jerry Pretty at second base. Bobby Avila had a sparkling season with the Indians last year. He's one of the fastest men in baseball. A beautiful slide. Twenty-one game winner of the Cleveland Indians last year. Early win. Everything he's got's behind this pitch. Jerry Coleman of the Yankees has been one of baseball's best defensive second basemen. He covers a lot of ground.
Al Rosen of the Indians going in a second with a double. Here's a fellow that plays a mess of center field for Cleveland. It's Larry Doby. If you've ever seen a big cat get on its feet, watch this. Well, maybe a grandpa saw this fellow pitch. He's still got it, though. It's the fabulous Satchel Page with his own brand of slow motion. And this chunky little fella is Eddie Lopat, a 20-game winner with the New York Yankees. Here's another Yankee stalwart, the Springfield rifle, Vic Rashi. Now a nifty bit of short stopping by Ray Boone of the Cleveland Indians. One of the spunkiest players in the American League is Nelson Fox with the White Sox. This is one moment, though, when he wasn't too happy. One of the real rookie stars was Minoso of the White Sox. Look at the cut that guy takes. Uh-oh, here's that character again. The guy looks like he's made out of rubber. Well, from the ridiculous to the sublime. Hi, neighbor. Nice to see you. Have a gansett. Another in the parade of great stars at Fenway Park is little Phil Rizzuto of the Yankees. Here's Rizzuto attempting one of his famous bunts. Let's get those Narragansett television cameras focused on some of the highlight plays we saw last year. You know, the left field wall looks easy to play at Fenway Park, but it can really be trouble as Hank Bauer of the Yankees finds out on this carom. That's Joe DiMaggio backing him up. If you've ever shot three cushion billiards, well, you know how this fellow feels. Now let's watch a perfect play on a carom off the wall by Dom DiMaggio. Johnny Pesky meeting the relay. Watch this pickup. Jerry Coleman covering more ground than a circus tent. Always important in baseball. Les Moss has a tough decision to make on this one. Ken Holcomb, number 34, just laid that ball down. Now he has to come back to the plate for another sacrifice. Leo Kiley of the Red Sox fielding it, and Big Waldropo decides he better get out of the way. And that's Billy Goodman receiving the throw at first. Yep, 1951 is history, but it's always another year for the ball fans. And it's Lou Boudreau, the new manager of the Red Sox, being congratulated by the popular general manager, Joe Cronin, on the left, and yours truly on the right. Yes, sir, Boudreau is the manager of the future, but memories of the past will always live. The heritage of Buck Freeman and that great outfield of Lewis, Speaker, and Hooper of the great Bill Kerrigan teams. Jimmy Collins of the Red Sox, the pioneer of brilliant third base play. And other infielders, Jake Stahl, Jack Berry, Everett Scott. Don't forget the pitchers. A young fellow named Babe Ruth was one of the best with the Red Sox. And there were Cy Young and Smokey Joe Wood, Herb Pennock, and Lefty Grove. You can go right on down the line to Jimmy Fox, 
and to Mr. Clutch, Joe Cronin, and Bobby Dorr, who has just announced his retirement after 14 brilliant seasons with the Red Sox. And of course, the present gang today, carrying on in the colorful and exciting Red Sox tradition. Whatever you like best about Major League Baseball is waiting for you with the Red Sox in action. Brought to you on both network radio and television by Narragansett, New England's largest brewery. Hi, neighbor. Have a Gansett.